For more than 300 years, Detroit has lived by one principle. No grit, no glory. Get me out clear, let me go. Off these guys. To succeed here, the only thing that works the is work. Takuma Sato knows the kind of work that can turn a career of missed opportunities into an Indy 500 victory. Saturday made the racers dig deep. Today they see if there's anything left. Twice the grit. All right, champ, let's bring it home. Twice the glory. It's time for the Detroit Grand Prix. It's time to go to work. Speaking of glory, despite week-long forecasts of rain and bad weather today, it is a glorious day in the Motor City as we get ready for the second of the two weekend races that comprise the Detroit Grand Prix for the Verizon IndyCar Series. You look at the spectacular conditions as the field is gridded. We look back now on race one from yesterday. Turn two, lap one, James Hinchcliffe starting fifth spins. He somehow keeps the car from hitting the wall. The safety crew gets him fired up before he loses a lap. Hinch comes back to get a podium finish. Graham Rahal started on pole position and simply dominated. A fast car, excellent driving, and a good strategy call by his race team. And Graham Rahal led all but 15 laps of the race en route to his fifth career win at his first of 2017. That was part one. How about part two? Let's go right down to the grid and hear from some of the drivers. We start with Rick DeBrule. And we will start with Takuma Sato. A week ago, this guy was drinking the milk at the Indy 500, having just won the race. Today, he won the pool for this second race. And I have to tell you, when he got out of that car, I thought he was just as excited as when he won the Indy 500. Why did this one mean so much to you? Well, it means a lot, you know, it's just having fun, you know, with ourselves, but uh, all these boys, you know, these boys, they build a car, it's just non-slip, non-stop, and uh, these guys are great jobs, that's why I wanted to share the uh, joy. All right, once again, Takuma Sato starting from the front, no milk today, but he wants it just as badly. Dr. Jerry Punch? What a courageous effort yesterday for four-time champion Scott Dixon with a beaten and battered left ankle. He never complained, and all he did was finish second and take the points lead. Scotty, today, what's the bigger challenge? 600 more pressures on the brake pedal with that left foot or managing these red tires for the pit strategy? Uh, you know, I think we can get through the foot. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, the reds are going to be tough. I think, you know, the ambient conditions are a lot hotter today. The track seems a lot hotter. Uh, we're starting on used reds, too. We don't even have any new ones left. So, um, hopefully, we can keep the, the camping world car up front. Uh, if we switch strategies just because, the, you know, we're not holding on as well, hopefully we catch a yellow and, and maybe, you know, jump to the start of the, you know, to the head of the field. But, uh, you know, good points yesterday. It was a big day for the team, and we, we definitely needed that. So, um, you know, hopefully we can do the same today. Hey, good luck today. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And, Doc, of course, it was a dominating performance yesterday by Graham Rahal winning the race from the pole. You had a clear view into turn one yesterday. Now you're starting third. you have to change the game plan at all? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we're going to have to adjust a little bit. Just, you know, it, it, yesterday we could control the pace. We were able to save the tires. We were able to get the fuel numbers that we needed. Uh, we were able to get the United Reynolds car in victory lane. But, uh, you know, today the end goal is the same. It's just uh, what kind of pace do these two have ahead of us? Uh, Elio, how does he factor into this? And just having a good start. So, you know, we'll see. Obviously starting used reds. Uh, hopefully they hang in there for us like they did yesterday. We can have a long first stint and stick to the same strategy. But as you know, it changes, you know, on the fly here all the time. So hopefully we'll have a good, smooth, safe day. All right, they're looking to adjust as conditions change. Remember, he vaulted himself four positions in the championship yesterday. He's hoping to cash in again today, Alan. Jan, thank you. Graham Rahal's victory yesterday made it seven different winners in the first races of this season for the Verizon IndyCar Series. There's a look at the group who stood on the top step of the podium so far. That's tied for the most all time in the series. Will it be a new record and an eighth different winner today or will it be one of those seven who stands on the top of the podium as the winner here in Detroit? And hello from the Motor City, Alan Bestwick, Eddie Cheever, Scott Goodyear. That's where I start. One of those seven or somebody new winning today. I think somebody new today, but it is definitely a fact that there is not a more competitive series in the world than IndyCar right now. Every time we go to race, we have no idea who's going to win. And today, 
really isn't that different. And we've seen domination by teams before, but what I found yesterday very interesting is the five different teams represented it in the first five positions. So it tells you, to your point, that this is very competitive. And I expect we're going to see the same thing again today. Yeah, I think so. Now, headline number two from yesterday's race, besides Graham Rahal's dominance, was that the Penske team didn't produce their usual stellar results here in the captain's hometown. You see, their highest finisher was Joseph Newgarden in fourth. Elio Castroneves maybe had the pace to win the race, but but uh, didn't work out for them. As for today, will we see a Penske rebound or will we see more of the same? I would have loved to have been a fly in the wall yesterday when they were debriefing with Roger as to why they didn't win here. This is the, the epicenter of the Penske empire. This is a very important race for them. And I think you're going to see a resurgence. I'd be shocked if you didn't. But I know there's a lot of pressure on those drivers to perform today. And you think about last year, 10 wins in the championship with Simon Pagano, 14 wins by Chevrolet, two by Honda. So far this year, four Honda wins and only three by Chevrolet. So the heat's turned up not only by the drivers, but also by the manufacturers. As you mentioned, Honda's dominant here yesterday in Chevy's territory. Yeah, Chevy's headquarters just down the road, plainly visible from the raceway at Belle Isle. There is the grid. The command to start engines and the green flag for race number two of the Detroit Grand Prix doubleheader is coming right up on a beautiful day in the Motor City. The Detroit Grand Prix on ABC brought to you by Firestone. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Back in Detroit, just a couple of minutes away from the command to start engines for the Detroit Grand Prix for the Verizon IndyCar Series. We're always looking at new fine, fine new views for you in these telecasts. Of course, Visor Cam made its debut this year and perhaps gave us its best example of just what the driver sees and feels yesterday when Graham Rahal carried it for us in the Detroit Grand Prix. The bumps, the movements, everything that went about it during the course of the race on Saturday really displayed beautifully from this new view. Let's show you some of the TV magic that goes into making visor cam a reality on the racetrack. The Verizon IndyCar Series and Minneapolis Motor Speedway always been leaders in technology and innovation, and this is the next step of that. For the first time, we're going to take the viewer at home and show them from the driver's perspective what it looks like to dive into turn one at Indy, flat out at 235 miles per hour. Concept. And in less than seven weeks, we had visor cams on two drivers for the purse practice here at Indy. The in-car camera itself is nothing new, but what this will do is take a different angle and perspective of what it feels like to be a driver in the Verizon IndyCar series. You know, we've always had the roll hoop camera, which is just above the driver, but it's not the actual driver's view, and that's what people want to see. It's going to be pretty unique. I think a uh, fan's going to get a whole different perspective. It really gives you that eye-level view, which is, uh, which is awesome. You'll see it all as I do. I think this technology just gets us a little bit closer to, to giving fans and, and people at home that experience the drivers actually going through during the race. Onboard cameras have been around for a while and they played around with them a little bit on the nose or on the rear wing and looking over the rear tire. But to actually put it on the driver's helmet and take it that next step, I mean, it, it amped up everybody in the room because it was just that, that cool and that unique. There's been a great response even in the time it's been used during practice. Instantly, the tweets are rolling in and everything else that people, you know, are thrilled by what they're seeing. It's probably one of the best innovations that we can have within the sport. There's really no series in the world right now that's offering this type of technology that you can see, you know, firsthand what the driver is actually seeing during a race. There's never been another camera of any kind ever on a driver's helmet at Indy for the first time. We're going to have one this year. Our fans are going to finally feel a little closer to what that must look and feel like in the driver's seat of one of these cars. For a fan to be able to experience going 230 miles an hour in traffic will be quite something. Well, it was quite something last week in India. It was quite something yesterday, and Graham Rahal will wear visor cam for us again today here in Detroit. So yesterday, the top two finishers made two pit stops during the race. The next two made three pit stops. Jan Bikas, what are we going to see today? Well, one of the things you see, Alan, in race number two, historically, the teams tend to gravitate to that two-stop strategy. The theory is there's more rubber on the racetrack so you can manage your tire wear. But the three-stop strategy is still alive. 
The reason being, most of these teams know if you want to make major gains, the one way to do it, try a three-stop strategy and do the opposite of your competition. Alan? Right, John, it really will be interesting to see. You heard Scott Dixon a minute ago talk about warmer conditions today. A lot of the teams starting on used of the softer red tires because of the tire allotments on a weekend have already been met. And this hot and greasy track that Scott talked about really just really accelerates the problem you have with the tires here because remember, it's a bumpy street course. It's not a purpose-built racetrack, so there's not a whole lot of grip here anyways. You're driving over the crown in the road. You're also driving over manhole covers. Not a whole lot of grip here for these drivers to contend with today. So a lot of things to think about, a lot of things to keep track of during the race. It's part of what makes uh, this particular event, the Detroit Grand Prix, so unpredictable. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. A record for fewest number of caution laps in yesterday's race. Will we see the same again today? And if not, how does it impact who winds up holding the winner's trophy? Time to get the race started. Trackside now, General Motors dignitaries are gathered to get it underway. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome Vice President, Global Integrity and Global Product Safety General Motors, Ken Morris. Drivers, start your engines! <laughs> The sound we like to hear, race engines running on a Sunday afternoon. The green flag for the Detroit Grand Prix race number two is next. One lap away from the start of the Detroit Grand Prix. Let's take care of some business before we get down to business. The Honda two-seater race car leading the field. Ari Leyendijk Jr. driving today. To see more Honda racing content, go to racewithhonda.com. Our onboard cameras today, Tony Kanon carries the NTT data camera. He's in 15th position on the grid. Alexander Rossi just a spot ahead of him with the AutoNation onboard in 14th. Simon Pagino, Verizon onboard camera starting in 11th. Marco Andretti has an AutoNation onboard from 9th on the grid. Cameras with all top five starters again today. James Hinchcliffe with the Lucas Isle Oil on board from fifth position. Same spot he started yesterday when he finished third. Elio Castro Neves has a Verizon on board from fourth position. Yesterday's winner, Graham Ray Hall with the TurnsForTroops.com camera starting third. Ryan Hunter Ray qualified on the front row. AutoNation on board starting on the outside pole. And pole position goes to the Indianapolis 500 winner, Takuma Sato, who has a Honda on board. Rick DeBrule. Well, let's talk about yesterday's race. Domination is about the best way you could describe exactly what happened with Graham Rahal. That guy not only started on the pole, he led the most laps, and then he won the race. But today is going to be much tougher. Not only is he starting in the second row, that means he has to contend with traffic and dirty air. But he's also got a couple things going against him. Not just that, history as well. That's because so far, no driver since they started the duel in Detroit has won both races on a weekend. But, of course, Graham wants to see if he can change that today. Doc? Yeah, what a difference a day makes for Ryan Hunter Ray. Yesterday started 12th, uh, didn't like the pace and balance of the car, had a three pit stop strategy, but every time he came out, he was mired in heavy traffic, ended up finishing 13th. Today, as you just heard, starting on the front row, best start of the year. He said in just a few laps of qualifying, liked the balance of the car much better. Expect a two stop strategy today. That's what worked yesterday for Graham Rahal to win the race. Alan? Okay, Doc, broadcast commentary available in Spanish by activating your SAP button presented by ESPN Deportes. 70 laps around the 14 turn. Raceway at Belle Isle course. Takuma Sato, 26, your pole sitter, leading the field down to the start.
So Sato gets the lead down the back straightaway toward turn number seven. A lot of taking a breath moments there in those first few corners, but everybody got through it cleanly. A lot of jockeying going on, especially in the back section. You know, we always say starts and restarts, gain positions, it's great. Remember, cold tires right now on this bumpy circuit. I think the drivers did a great job, Eddie, by no body contact because that's a tough deal to get through in the first lap. I agree, but they had to work with each other, and they did, and it was by far and away the fastest traffic jam I've seen in a while. <laughs> So right about now, they're starting to hit their pace. The car is warming up. They're, they're getting that first race out of their system, and they have to start grinding at these next 69 laps. Don't forget, everybody did a race yesterday, Scott, and they're, they're tired. And you and I were talking about that in the drive back to the hotel last night. When we came here, we only did one race on this bumpy circuit. It generally took you a week just to recover to the next weekend before you raced again. And we talked about it yesterday also. These guys, two races in a row, very difficult to do. Alexander Rossi having a peek on his teammate, 27, Marco Andretti. Sato is leading his teammate, Hunter Ray. Sometimes, well, I said it, I, I know, I used the line before. Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. And the bug just appeared. But this is what we <laughs> talked about before. Exactly what the drivers are seeing. What we're feeling is just all the bumps. You're trying to put your foot on the gas, but you're trying to do it not too quickly. Otherwise, the rear tires will spin through this complex here. Looking, working the steering wheel down a couple of gears. Coming out of turn 11. Now listen to the acceleration. It's 11, 12, up to 14, 165 miles an hour here sometimes. Over the big bump in two. And you can feel that inside the car all the way through your body. J.R. Hildebrand is on pit road, Rick. Yeah, this is time to talk strategy. Obviously, they want to get off those red tires as fast as they can. It's important to point out he had a very specific problem during qualifying. They had a yellow, a red flag that came out. It shortened the session. When he went out for the second part of the session, he was not able to turn a fast lap, a second lap. He took the checkered before he was able to turn a lap. As a result, he was all the way back at the field. So their attitude right now is roll the dice big time and see if he can't make something big happen during this race. So remember in the Verizon IndyCar series, two different tire compounds used. The red sidewalls are the alternate tires. They are softer, they're faster initially, but they fall off more quickly. The black tires, the primary tire, a little slower than the reds initially, but last hold their speed longer. The crossover between the speed of the reds and the fall off and the pace that the blacks maintain is a short one on this racetrack this year. And it varies every track you go to. And you mentioned a short one here, it absolutely is. And guys, we'd like to get off those red sidewall tires as quickly as possible so watch for that throughout the race this is a totally different race for Ray Hall yesterday he went out by himself drove a very clean race and put a big gap between the cars that are falling him today he has his work cut out from getting by Hunter Rain Sato and he has Castro Nevis that is not that far behind him so you see Alexander Rossi there and Marco Andretti there. Rossi just passed Marco a lap ago, now under challenge as Newgarden comes to Marco's inside. And, and Marco has not given up. They call that the over-under. Now he's just got to make sure he gets good acceleration out of the turns. Bumpy section here coming up to turn six, long straightaway ahead. So finishing off that story on the 98 and the 27, Rossi and Andretti, the stewards were investigating whether Rossi was guilty of an infraction when he passed Marco. They have issued a review. And what would the infraction be? Oh, oh defending. Yes, he defended into the next corner. Yeah, he moved over, no. changed his line there. So he has to give the spot up to the 27 for blocking. I want to check. I thought I just maybe heard Marco called for a penalty in that exchange with Newgarden as well, but that I'm, I might have misheard that, so let me double-check on that. Jan? 
irrespective of that penalty, Alexander Rossi, you may have noticed, you just talked about the difference between the primary Firestones and the alternate. Alexander Rossi, as he gives that position back, just as you called, that was, again, from race control, he is on the primaries, whereas Marco Andretti is on those red sidewalled alternates. He is only one of two. Connor Daly, the only one in this race that's gone for that strategy. And again, you talk about that crossover period. There you can see it's already happened because the Blacks, the Firestone primary, seem to be faster at the moment. And I did confuse those radio calls, calls earlier, so it was the 98-27 situation that was being confirmed by race control. You saw Rossi give the spot back, go right back around Marco, and so Marco is the bottleneck here in this group that's racing from 12th place on back. And he's allowed to defend as much as he wants. You cannot move your car to stop the car behind you after it's already made its first move. Takuma Sato with a half second lead over Ryan Hunter Ray. Graham Ray Hall 1.1 seconds back in third. Just underway in the Detroit Grand Prix race number two. We go side by side here on ABC. Here comes the fun with Sea Dew. Starting at just $52.99 and get 0% financing. Visit SeaDew.com today. Changing your oil after 3,000 miles? If you'd used new Mobile One annual protection, you wouldn't have to. Why are you three inches tall? What? You don't like shorts, people? Don't change your oil. New Mobile One annual protection. So if anyone has a reason that these two should not be wed, speak now. Yeah, so sorry. Oh, no. It's just that your friend Daryl here is supposed to be live streaming the wedding and he's not getting any service. I missed like the whole thing. What? Oh, and I just got an unlimited plan. It's the right plan, wrong network. See, Verizon has the largest, most reliable 4G LTE network in America. It's built to work better in cities. I'll tell you what, just use mine. Thanks. No problem. All right, let's go live. Say hi to everybody who wasn't invited. <laughs> when you really, really want the best, switch to Verizon Unlimited and get our best smartphones for just $15 a month. You love them together, but you've never had them quite like this. At Red Lobster's Lobster and Shrimp Summerfest, the lobster and shrimp you love are teaming up in so many new ways. Like new coastal lobster and shrimp with a lobster tail with butter and herbs, sweet, smoky barbecue red shrimp, and shrimp crusted with, get this, Cape Cod kettle chips. Or try lobster and shrimp overboard. A dish this good makes you this hungry. It's the highlight of the season and can't last, so hurry in. Hi guys, it's great to be here. In the desert. At the mall. On the mountain. At school. At the beach. In the Big Easy. Yeah. yeah. Today I want to show you guys the next gen Chevy Equinox. What do you think? That's pretty. Pretty sexy. It looks aggressive. But not overbearing. It's not too big, not too small. It seems like the perfect car for anybody. I would take it anywhere. She's a bad mamma jamma. <laughs> <laughs> Current qualified GM lessees can get this introductory lease on the all new 2018 Chevy Equinox for around $249 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. So you saw James Hinchcliffe make that green flag pit stop. Unfortunately, he has been ticketed for speeding on the pit lane. He will have to make a drive-through penalty, which will cost him about 22 seconds, a little less than that, to pass through the pit lane uh, at pit road speed. Also, Oriel Servia ticketed for speeding on the pit lane. I'll be on the pit lane speed penalty. You'll pit this lap. That's very hard, very hard to recover from that. Unless he has a yellow, it'll be almost impossible to get back in that leading group. All right, so there is Takuma Sato out to a second and a half lead. Here's the balancing act now on these softer tires. Maintaining pace to make it a two-stop race, you do have to save a little fuel. You have to meet a number in, uh, in each of these stints. And like we saw Graham Rahal do yesterday, try and put a gap on the rest of them if you can. Uh, in case the caution comes out and the strategy doesn't fall in your favor. When you're out front and you're driving by yourself, you're able to be smooth and calculated with your steering wheel and the throttle and the brake pedal. When you're trying to defend and watch in the mirrors and see what's going on behind you, you're a little rougher with the car, more abusive on the tires. It raises the temperature of the tires. The tires will fall away quicker for you. So for Takuma Sato right now, he's got the best world because he's a smooth driver and he's doing a nice job on making sure he's not overheating his tires. A look from... Elio Castro Neves' car running in fourth position. And a reminder to download IndyCar Mobile to access exclusive live in-car cameras, hear driver and pit crew chatter, and more only on Verizon. 
get the feeling looking at Castro Neves that he's on a fuel plan right now and he's doing the best that he can to keep pace and not use the car or a lot of fuel. But he has to be careful because Oloshin is not that far behind him. There is Mikhail Oloshin. Had a very solid run yesterday. His uh, best Detroit finish ever finished in sixth position. And here he is after qualifying sixth today, running in fifth once Hinchcliffe pulled off the pit. And Aloshan is not somebody that will mess around when he's behind you. He doesn't try to pass. He just throws the whole car in there. Remember how close he came to winning at Mid-Ohio last year and how close and how well he ran at Pocono late last year? He has the speed, and he definitely doesn't lack any of the courage. Well, sometimes it's that courage that's put that car thrown into the turns, like you mentioned before, Eddie. He's ruffled a few feathers around here from a few of his fellow drivers, but he's uh, starting to smoothen himself out. Challenge for Graham Ray Hall on Hunter Ray. Whoa! On the outside, under braking. Did they touch there, or was that just look like they might no. have come close? That's for sure a touch. Now, for the 28 car, the DHL car of Ryan Hunter Ray, maybe that was a hard enough hit on that front wheel that it might bend what we call the toe that's on the car or the camber. So if this car starts to go slower, that means his steering is probably not acting correctly. We'll watch and see how his pace holds up here. What Castro Nevis has to do right now is pounce all over Hunter Ray because he's flustered. He just got passed. Being passed like that on the outside of a corner is very frustrating. Castro Nevis has an opportunity right now, if he can come out of this corner close to him, to get in front of Hunter Ray. Castro Nevis on the push to pass. Hunter Ray defends. He just hit the push to pass as well. That's that digital board you see behind the driver's head. Scott That's it. On pit road. This is over. Castro Nevis has gone by. That was perfect. Perfectly executed. And Hunter Ray does not give up. And he passes him on the outside. A long, long pit stop on the left for Scott Dixon. And a lotion by. Something wrong with the three. Yep, flat, got tire. A flat tire. Got a flat tire. This time, this time. You saw him on the steering wheel there turning his fuel trim, and there's some more battling going on. Will power through a motion. Very hard for Castro Nevis to keep the pace up because when the tire goes down, you start running on the bodywork and you create an enormous amount of damage to your car. And what a tough break. Elotion on the inside of Connor Daly. We've got a lot of passing going on today, guys. I wasn't anticipating watching this. Look at that tire. It's going to start ripping off that piece of bodywork. Yeah, and that's the key thing, isn't it? As a driver, you want to get in the pit so quickly. So you're watching Elio Castanevis on the left-hand side of your screen, but you have to make sure you don't cause more work for the crew to fix once you get in. Yeah, but you can on, 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 Here he comes to the entrance of pit road. Will Power's car, right side of the screen, seems to have come alive through all of this uh, scramble lately. Here he is working Hunter Ray for third, while Castro Neves comes to the attention of the Penske team, Doc. Must have had a puncture or something. They started this race on uh, red tires and only had one lap, and that was just one lap of qualifying, but that left rear tire is gone. They were trying to save fuel to make it on the two-stop strategy. Not going to happen now. Four tires. It'll be two more stops for Elio for today. All right, Doc, there goes power by Hunter Ray. Back to the Castro Neves situation and what led to the problem. Oh, some tail swapping going on oh, by no. Ryan Hunter Ray. Elio takes advantage, and you can see the front wing of Ryan Hunter Ray, the 28 yellow cars. Look at the debris. That's getting right into the sidewall of the tire, Eddie, and it cuts that left rear tire for Elio Castro Nevis in the Hitachi car. He, he turned over, getting the right line for that corner just maybe half a second too early. Well, it's what's the saying go? What behind me, no concern me. Isn't that what you tell me all the time? <laughs> that's, that's the Italian <laughs> so that's rule. What he was thinking. That's the Italian rule of driving. I have so corrupted you guys with that line <laughs> from that old movie. Aloshin working yeah. on Hunter Ray. More contact. Ooh. Hunter Ray is struggling with the balance of his car. Remember, he had that contact earlier I mentioned. Is the alignment out on the car now? That might be a possibility. Hunter Ray desperately needs a yellow right now to change tires. 
And another car goes by him. That's Pagano. Rossi there, looking outside. And Rossi passes him on the outside also. Well, he makes sure he makes room for his teammate not to collide. That was a smart move by the experienced Ryan Hunter Ray. Oh, you can really sense his frustration right now. Yeah, look how the car's getting into the middle of the turn, Eddie. It's just, it's waddling into the turn, you know, when it really moves around underneath you, so he's having difficulty getting the car to the center of the turn, the apex. Hunter Ray's team has tires out in the pit lane. Yeah, he's in the pits. All right, Doc. It's kind of a year that Hunter Ray has had three DNFs, basically a complaint that the uh, they're going to put some front wing in it, by the way. He also had a significant understeer. They're going to change the front wing. Change it all four tires. Here comes the uh, backup front wing. I've used all the contact there with Elio Castro and Evans trying to get it bolted in. Just the kind of year Hunter Ray has had three DNFs, including an engine loss at Indianapolis after leading 28 laps. Well, yesterday's race was dominated by Graham Rahal and maybe didn't have a whole lot of headlines to write down. We've had a whole page full of them already in the early laps of this one. We're back after this from your ABC station. There's the gap, first to second, to Kuma Sato, to Graham Rahal in the Detroit Grand Prix. So all of these events that have happened with Hunter Ray having to change the front wing and Castro Neves with the flat tire, Hinchcliffe's penalty, uh, and so on. These are the people that have dropped. Now, Scott Dixon, we saw have the long pit stop a few minutes ago. Let's go follow up on what caused that with Dr. Jerry Punch. It was a fueling issue, basically. They ca the car came in for a normal four tire change. A late last minute call by Mike Hall. He saw the tires going away, and Scott couldn't make progress. So why not, rather than sit out like we did yesterday for half the race, come on in, get the reds off, get the blacks back on. You'll have some free track in front of you to make up time but here's the issue they got on pit road didn't think the car was fueling they knew the fueling uh, couple was engaged they didn't think the fuel was going in and in fact it was but that cost him about eight and a half extra seconds now he's got clean track but he's pretty far behind yeah dixon back in 14th place doc and he's 30.7 seconds behind the race leader takuma sato who has yet to make his pit stop max chilton is uh, hitting the pit lane at the moment. Now there's Ryan Hunter Ray after his problems and the front wing change. Hunter Ray, who started second, is all the way back in 19th place, 45.8 seconds behind the race leader. That front wing obviously lost all of its integrity. That's why he was having such a hard time for those uh, three or four laps where he's getting past right, left, and center. There's enough of this race left if there is a yellow for him to come back. But that really is a, a, a dead front wing. All right, so there is Hunter Ray just behind Scott Dixon and Max Chilton, just ahead of Elio Castro Neves, who is in 20th place in 47 and a half seconds behind these two. So Graham Ray Hall closing, 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 but catching him and passing him is another thing. And Takuma Sato will not give the lead up easily. Now that Kasuma, <laughs> Sato, now that Sato is an Indy 500 champion, his, your car tends to get wider <laughs> and more difficult to pass. Yeah, I can agree Both with you. Both of them on the push to pass here. But Ray Hall is really quick on and strong under braking. You know, you think about Takuma Sato, really didn't get going on anything with wheels until he was about 12 years old. And that started with bicycles. And then he went off to the Honda school at the Suzuki circuit back in Japan and took a school, won the school, and he had an opportunity to then go race in Europe wasn't really racing cars competitively full-time until he's 19 years of age and wow. then made it to Formula One and now look at him here as you mentioned he's an Indianapolis 500 winner and just for perspective in this day and age that 19 years that's late yes they're either in Formula One or sometimes even getting into uh, this classification of racing absolutely he's not just an Indy 500 champion he's the first and only Japanese Indianapolis 500 champion And what a race that was. He certainly, oh, it's a classic race, wasn't it? Watch Taku work here. We've only done 16 laps. Oh, you know, we talk about those red tires losing grip. Look at him work that wheel. 
He's fighting the car guys right now. Not a whole lot of grip there, but he's trying to get to a point where he can make it all the way to his first fuel stop. So smooth on the gas, not abusive on the tires, not abusive on the brakes. I don't know if you noticed when we did the pre-race interview with him, when Rick DeBrule did, the taping he had on his hands. You see how hard they're working those wheels with the glove on, the heat, uh, the beating they take, and now the second race in two days, and how his uh, he had the kinetic tape and so on at places on his hands before he put those driving gloves you on. You have to, because if you don't, your hands will get almost bloody in the middle of a run. But to put his performance in perspective, you're always measured against your teammates. Sato is a good 16 seconds ahead of Rossi, which is the closest Andretti car to him. That's not bad. 16 seconds in 17 laps. Well, Ray Hall continues to stalk. Sato continues to lead. Soon we'll be approaching the window for a pit stop for these looking to make the race on just two visits to the pit lane. Changing your oil after 3,000 miles? Kevin Harvick. If you'd use new Mobile One annual protection, you wouldn't have to. It'd protect your engine for one year with just one oil change. Don't change your oil. New Mobile One annual protection. There's a challenging spirit within Honda. It gives us the courage to go faster and the thinking to make it real. Whether it looks like a truck, a sedan, or a coupe, inside is the heart of a race car. So if anyone has a reason that these two should not be wed, speak now. Yeah, so sorry. Oh, no. It's just that your friend Daryl here is supposed to be live streaming the wedding, and he's not getting any service. I missed, like, the whole thing. What? Oh, and I just got an unlimited plan. It's the right plan, wrong network. See, Verizon has the largest, most reliable 4G LTE network in America. It's built to work better in cities. I'll tell you what. Just use mine. Thanks. No problem. All right, let's go live. Say hi to everybody who wasn't invited. <laughs> when you really, really want the best, switch to Verizon Unlimited and get our best smartphones for just $15 a month. Are you still trying to perform with an old computer? That's like LeBron trying to perform with old equipment. Ooh, boy, that is not what the fans signed up to see. Is outdated equipment holding you back? Upgrade your game to Intel's fastest processor. Probably upgrade those, too. The goal of every allergy sufferer is zero nasal allergy symptoms, and nothing gets you closer than Nasacort. Unlike antihistamines that target one cause of your symptoms, Nasacort stops more. And stopping more gets you closer to zero. Nasacort stops more of what makes you miserable. Here comes the fun with Sea-Doo. Starting at just $52.99 and get 0% financing. Visit SeaDoo.com today. Degree has redefined deodorant with motion sense technology so that I can redefine power, footwork, range. The more I move, the more it works. Degree, it won't let you down. Takuma Sato continues to lead. Graham Rahal continues to stalk. The NBA Finals continue on ABC tonight. Game two between Cleveland and Golden State. The Dubs up 1-0, 13-0 in the playoffs so far. Cleveland looking to change that. Coverage starts at 7.30 with NBA Countdown. And of course, we stream it live on the ESPN app. Fun stuff. All right, the uh, lead duo has been joined by a third. Will Power is chasing him down. Tires good for about 10 more. I'm pushing it this hot on that thing. I don't know. Gotta let us know if you think those tires are gonna hang on for eight to 10 more laps. Now that was a little while ago, fishing out whether they were going to stick on the plan for the two-stop strategy or whether the handling of the car was going to go away. Well, his times obviously answered that because he's closed the gap. Yeah. Now Ray Hall is not just worrying about Sato. Ray Hall has to worry about power. But I'd like to add on that Will Power Radio, though, Eddie, and you know this, you can turn around and say, 
you know, you have 10 more laps to go and say the tires are going in, the tires are going away, I need to come in, and they'll just say, we can't come in, you need another eight or 10 laps. So they're asking him just for information, but I don't think they'd call him in. They well, would just make him work harder. I think, well, again, that radio was from a little bit earlier, so they were at the decision point. This, uh, this is it, we He's either stop now it. or we're going for the two-stop right. strategy, right. period. So now Power makes this a three-way fight for the race lead. The highest running car that has stopped already is Joseph Newgarden, who just moved up to eighth position. Newgarden pitting at the same time Scott Dixon bit, did uh, back at lap nine, and we had all that other stuff going on uh, on the screen. There is Rossi passing Aloshin and Charlie Kimball right there. So now maybe the handling on those softer tires giving up on Mikhail's car compared to some of these he's racing with. A note on Rossi, there were only three drivers that started the race on the harder primary tires, and Rossi was one of them. Uh, the other was Connor Daly and Carlos Munoz, who started scratching the field after a crash during qualifying this morning and an engine change. Now we'll see what sort of times Rossi does. And when those tires start to go off, guys, when we talk about those red sidewall tires, it's hard to put the power down the ground. You want to push your foot on the throttle, but the tires will start to spin. You want to drive deeper into the turns, but the tires will start to lock up under braking. So as a driver, there's no power steering, power brakes. There's no ABS here. It's all up to the driver. Doc? And here's Simon Pagano, obviously on a two pit stop strategy. They were having him save fuel and be careful. The reds go off and the blacks go on. Watch it fueling, fueling. Want to get out in under seven and a half, barely over 7.6 seconds for Simon Pagano. He'll have to make only one more stop today. And I believe as he exited, I saw them lay out tires in Will Powers' pit. So expect to see the third place car come down the pit lane the next time he comes by. For all the teams that were counting on an early yellow, they're gonna start paying a negative price for that decision. Another one I just wanna mention while we watch this fight for the lead and track power as he comes toward pit opening was uh, J.R. Hildebrand. Remember, he was the first one to move to pit road at lap two, got off the soft tires onto the primaries. He has been knocking down fast lap of the race after fast lap of the race. He's worked his way up in the pack to ninth from the back of the pack. Leader is in, third place is in. Rick? Takuma Sato once again won the 8500 a week ago. Now he's trying to win this race. They were a little concerned about the temperature on the day. So much warmer than it was yesterday. But he's run a very clean race. Looks like a clean stop, but he is on his way. Doc? Will Power, what a difference a day makes. Yesterday they had him pit on lap 19. He had to save so much fuel. He really couldn't race the last two steps. Remember, they're hoping for a quick stop. He's getting pulled right on the race. Here goes Sato, here goes Power, and Sato will beat him off pit road. So now the question will become, as they blend into traffic here, once Graham Rahal, now the leader, makes his move to pit road, how does he come out in relation to these drivers? And Dixon is not sitting around waiting for all that to happen. Dixon is right behind Sato. He has warm tires. Sato does not have warm tires yet. Marco Andretti's attacking Power. But remember, all of these drivers are going to be on a three-stop strategy. So now we're looking to see how the caution plays, if the caution waves, all that kind of thing. But for the moment, if you make the assumption, I know assuming can be difficult, that the race is going to stay green, then where does Graham Rahal come out in relation to these guys who are on the two-stop strategies? Here's Rahal in from the lead, Rick. Yeah, just a couple laps ago, Graham Ray Hall actually came on the radio and asked the team, he said, when is Sato going to pit? Well, obviously his goal was to go one more lap beyond that. Nice clean stop, no adjustments, he's gone. Now we'll see where he exits the pits. Sato is coming down toward the front stretch. He'll enter the picture from your right. Here they come. Looks like Ray Hall is going to get away ahead of them. And I also believe that Reha was using some of his push to pass on wow. that in lap to give himself a bit more of a gap to Sato. Smart move by the team and that, by Graham Reha. That's a big gap that Reha has. That's a swing. Joseph Newgard leads the race. Now Graham Reha is second. Sato third. 
Dixon fourth, Power fifth. And again, Newgarden will be on the three-stop strategy. But he's only 4.3 seconds ahead of Rahel. So there is Newgarden. And there comes Rahal. That's the gap now, first to second, with a gap in their strategies as well. The plot thickens, I think it's fair to say, and many chapters still to be written in the Sunday version of the Detroit Grand Prix. The ability to bend the game to your will is a gift sought by many, but possessed by few. Here is LeBron James with three seconds left on the clock. LeBron! Just one play ignites the NBA app. Video from a variety of angles. Plus, updated impact on scores, stats, and series. Unbelievable! If the NBA app can do all that with just one play, think what it will do with the whole playoffs. Download the NBA app, the official app of the NBA. How could I possibly be expected to go without dominoes on a day like this? Alexa, ask Domino's to place my easy order. Ordering Domino's. Life moves pretty fast. If you can't track your pizza, you could miss it. Order two medium, two topping pizzas for just $5.99 each and track them on your favorite device. I guess I was born with a crayon in my hand. I decided to see if there was a way for design to play a positive role in what was going on in the world. There's a jacket that's reflective for visibility, sleeping bag jacket, jackets that turn into tents. I usually do my fashion sketches on the computer. I love drawing on the screen. There's no lag time at all. It feels just like my markers. With fashion, you can dress people and help people. It's really cool to see your work come to life. Every truck guy has their own way of conveying powerful. Yeah, boy. Kind of looks like a monster coming to eat you. Holy smokes. That is awesome. Strong. You got the basic and you got the beefy. I just think it looks mean. Incredible. No way. Getting goosebumps. Get 17% below MSRP on all Silverado 1500 LT pickups in stock. That's over $8,100 on this Chevy Silverado. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. I haven't been this excited maybe in my whole life. Next Sunday, Celebrity Family Feud is back <laughs> with Schumer versus Clarkson. One of you is headed to YouTube. <laughs> Celebrity Family Feud premieres next Sunday, part of ABC's Summer Fun and Games. Steve Harvey's Thunderdome. Yeah. <laughs> premieres ABC next Sunday. There's the race for third place. Takuma Sato, 26. Scott Dixon, 9. Followed by Will Power in the 12. This is all going on. About five seconds behind second place, Graham Rahal, and 14 seconds behind the leader, Joseph Newgarden. Now, Newgarden's mission at this point is to push, 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 and build as big of a lead as he can on these guys like Ray Hall and Sato, who are on the two-stop strategy. And to hope, 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 hope that a yellow <laughs> comes out. How about New Garden, Doc? Well, as we all know, he could have to, has to make two more stops. And as you guys mentioned, he could come any time now and make one final stop later. But why come now? Because what you want here at Detroit is a free racetrack, clean air in front, so you can just hustle the car and pull away. By the way, when he finished fourth yesterday, the team said for the first time, by the way, the newest driver for Penske, for the first time ever, they finally found what this young man wants in a car. He couldn't have been happier yesterday. Yeah, he won Barber, but he had nothing for Will Power. Now he may have found exactly Exactly the recipe he needs quick race car and that strategy right now may help him get a shot at winning today the essence of racing is going fast and right now Newgarden is almost two seconds quicker than anybody else he's doing laps and he did just did a lap in 14 9 5 and Ray Hall that is running second just did a lap in 16 5 that is blindingly fast so there's Newgarden whistle a tune wait and then you'll see second place. That's a long tune. Ray Hall, the second car on the screen. That's Oriol Servia, his teammate, just in front of them. Servia just off the pit lane. So the gap now between Newgarden in a Penske and Ray Hall is 10.8. And we have a Chevy 
leading the race here at Detroit. And more of the three stoppers cycling through. Hinchcliffe, uh, Ed Jones, Max Chilton on the pit lane here. While we watch Newgarden hammer around. Next race for the Verizon IndyCar Series is on the big mile and a half oval at Texas Motor Speedway. Next Saturday in prime time, our friends at NBCSN pick up the season from here. We wish them well. Remember that finish between Hinch and Graham Rahal there a year ago. And I look forward to seeing that one next Saturday night. Here's Newgarden in. Doc? And they could have left him out, but they were watching the speeds and watching how the tires were going away. He said, let's go ahead and get in. He will still make one more stop after this. Watching the car, going to get it full of fuel. Black tires going on. Clock in the bottom of your screen. Watching for fuel. No changes on the car. 7.9 seconds. Still one more stop to go. So there is Newgarden cycling off the pit lane. Dixon's in, Doc. Remember the first stop they had, the, the, the 15 and a half second stop because of fueling. Not this time. Great stop. 7.2 seconds, four tires, no adjustments, and they got it full of fuel. You can see how they come out of pit lane, have to blend onto the racetrack. Drivers have a warning light there that they look at on pit exit that flashes to let them know if traffic is coming. Scott Dixon would not have seen that light that time because there was no traffic, so he got it cleanly. So yesterday's winner, Graham Rahal, started on pole, led all but 15 laps. Today he started in row number two and has now cycled his way to the front after Takuma Sato led the opening segment of this race. After the exchange of pit stops, Rahal's team got him out ahead of the pack. We're back to Detroit after this from your ABC station. Tonight after Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, tune into Sports Center at night with Bucci and Anderson. Game two of the NBA Finals reviewed, plus uh, the day's best from Major League Baseball and the French Open. Sports Center at night after Cubs Cardinals, plus uh, streaming live on the ESPN app. Closing in on the midway point of the Sunday edition of the Detroit Grand Prix. Let's go up to speed. Rick DeBrule is covering the leader today, Graham Ray Hall. Yeah, Graham Rahal so far has actually gone pretty much as you would have hoped it would have gone if you were rooting for Graham Rahal. The key apparently to getting him out in front this time was that last lap before he came into the pit stop and then his first lap on the way out. The team came on the radio and said, your out lap was great. It's put him exactly in the position he wanted to be, which was yet like he was yesterday up front on a two-stop strategy. So once again, he is exactly where he wants to be. All right, let's talk about Takuma Sato, who's right behind him. And the team has been talking to him about his push to pass. Let's listen. Ray Hall has 108 of push to pass. You're 91 right now, so we'll consider for a little while. And the point being, they don't want him to use too much so that we, he, he does get the opportunity to battle Graham Ray Hall. He'll be in a good situation, not having lost too much. The main thing is yesterday, they felt they blew the strategy by bringing him in for three stops. Today, they want to work really hard to stay on that two-stop strategy. Doc? And behind them is a 12 car, Will Power, who won this race a year ago. Yesterday, they apologized to Will Power. Talk about strategy. They brought him in on lap 19, and he had to save so much fuel in the second stand, and he barely made it in the final stand and was a sitting duck. He finished 18. Not going to happen today. Power on a two stop strategy has a good car. Will make one more stop around lap 47. Now, behind him, Simon Pagano. Yesterday, he finished 16th. Uh, they didn't feel like they had a good race car balance-wise. We're stuck in traffic. Kyle Moyer says, we're going to go two stops. We're going to save fuel. We're going to make it. But they pin it on lap 22. So they're having to be a little careful on the fuel here in terms of this step. But they will make one more stop and have a good race car for the top for the final run. Behind them, how about Joseph Newgarden? What a rocket ship he has had today. They finally said they found the ingredients, the kind of car he likes to drive. Yesterday, at the end of the race, he was extended. He said, if I'd had a few more laps, I might have had a shot to win the race. Today, he's already made one stop. He will make one more only, feeling like he's got a very good race car right now running fifth. John. And for Tony Kanaan, you'll see coming to the picture here, he's running sixth at the moment, but unfortunately, he is just about due for a pit stop. He has two pit stops left today, so this is the highest that he's run today. You see the lowest being 18th, and unfortunately, somewhat inflated because he will soon be on pit road. 
Now behind Tony Kanaan, we've talked a little bit about Alexander Rossi taking the opposite approach to many. He started this race on the Firestone primary on the blacks. Now this is his stint on the red alternates, but not scrubbed ones. He had brand new tires that he saved and said, unfortunately, these are the tires we should have used in qualifying. We thought that scrubs would be better. He said, man, I wish I had that one back. Now he's just trying to manage these tires and get it to his next stop, Alan. All right, John, so this has been kind of interesting here. Mikhail Oloshin is obviously struggling with his car a little bit. That's Ed Jones in the 19, the 21 JR Hildebrand going at it pretty hard. Flat. Ah, contact and a flat right front. And I think I saw the front wing on Ed Jones's car actually just dragging on the ground a little bit. There yeah. we go. These front wings are like nice with those out. tires. He's in it. I thought that was his team's radio saying stay out, but here he is to get a new front wing. Yeah. And I think the reason they told him to stay out was they were hoping that some of the debris, either his or someone else's, might bring out a caution, which is what they were hoping for. So the team obviously has a front wing available, but it was somewhat of a surprise since they had been on the radio to say to stay out. And now, at insult to injury, he stalls on the exit. Yeah, that's tough. Ed had a great to drive yesterday. 21st starting spot, ninth place at the finish. On the inside, not really enough room there. Has to go over the curb on the inside. You can see he gets into the side of the 21 car. J.R. Hildebrand. You can see the front wing on the 19 just dragging and a flat tire on the 21. So lots of things going on in the pack. Another good drive at the front by Graham Rahal. Can he make it back-to-back -back wins in the Detroit Grand Prix? So if anyone has a reason that these two should not be wed, speak now. Yeah, so sorry. Oh, no. It's just that your friend Daryl here is supposed to be live streaming the wedding and he's not getting any service. I missed like the whole thing. What? Oh, and I just got an unlimited plan. It's the right plan, wrong network. See, Verizon has the largest, most reliable 4G LTE network in America. It's built to work better in cities. I'll tell you what, just use mine. Thanks. No problem. All right, let's go live. Say hi to everybody who wasn't invited. <laughs> when you really, really want the best, switch to Verizon Unlimited and get our best smartphones for just $15 a month. Changing your oil after 3,000 miles? If you'd use new Mobile One annual protection, you wouldn't have to. Why are you three inches tall? What? You don't like short people? Don't change your oil. New Mobile One annual protection. Performance. It's in every acceleration. It's in every corner. It's in every drive. This is the Jaguar F-Pace, our first performance SUV. For great offers, visit your local Jaguar retailer today. Jared.com and most Jared Galleria of jewelry stores. Allergies can hold you back. Break through with Allegra 5-in-1 Relief. It starts working in one hour. Relief lasts 24 hours, and it's non-drowsy. Break through allergies with Allegra 5-in-1 Relief. The finals are great and all, but can any of those guys do this? Thursday, June 22nd, TV's greatest variety show is back. Welcome to the Gong Show! British legend Tommy Maitland is your host. Let's go! Incredible acts and celebrity judges. I want to give you so much more than I'm going to. The world's finest athletes. The Sensei! Are not on this show. Before today, have you ever put a karate outfit on? <laughs> the Gong Show premieres Thursday, June 22nd, part of ABC's Summer Fun and Games.
watching last year's Verizon IndyCar Series champion Simon Pagano motor around Detroit in fourth position. A look from his cars. We remind you to download IndyCar Mobile and access exclusive live in-car cameras. Here, driver and pit crew chatter and more only on Verizon. The pit road's kind of been a busy place today and an eventful place. Oriel Servia got tagged for speeding early in the race. James Hinchcliffe as well had to do a pass-through penalty for speeding. Scott Dixon had that long stop when they had trouble fueling the car. See the fueling man. Now this was a strange one with Marco Andretti. They didn't pull the air wrench back. Just a mistake by the pit crew. Those great reflexes from Marco though to stop and keep from getting a further penalty other than the time that he lost. And uh, Mikhail Aloshin just served a uh, drive-through penalty. He made a pit stop and violated that pit exit line that Scott talked about earlier. So he had to come back in and Aloshin has dropped all the way down to 21st position. Those two penalties are non-negotiable, by the way. Yeah. There is no discussing with the uh, stewards. The data shows, period. Look at Sato has a Penske tidal wave behind him. <laughs> it's amazing how the Penske's have come up today, isn't it? Third, fourth, fourth and fifth. fifth, and of course, Castro Neves had problems earlier. He's back in 15th right now. Had a flat tire after contract contact, rather, with Ryan Hunter Ray. So, of the top nine cars, seven of them are on the two-stop plan. And the other two are Newgarden and Dixon, who run in fourth and, uh, excuse me, fifth and seventh. You see from our ESPN race strategist, we don't have a great likelihood of a caution in the next chunk of the race. These are the kinds of things that the uh, engineers grind on, the numbers from the race history and so on. They update them constantly, and it's that constantly ticking clock on the race strategy calls that have to be filtered through every single moment of every single race. And right now, Ray Hall has a 14 point three second lead on Sato and I want to go back to that pit stop that he made the only pit stop that he's made uh, in the race so far that was at lap 24 and it was lightning I mean his in lap his out lap the pit stop got him the jump over Sato in the line and you just mentioned the gap that he's got back now to Sato as Who's that? Castro Neves and Marco Andretti. This is pretty deep in the field. That sure is Marco's. He does this move every time somebody tries to pass him. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. that whoa. might cost him something. See if that results in a flat tire at all. We'll wait and see. Probably We're looks okay. A little information from Brian Herda. Watch these guys go into the turn. What happens all the time is you're fighting for the same amount of space. For Eliel, he does not think that Marco's come up on the inside of him all that much. He thinks that he's behind him, but he just keeps on going, collects the car. Watch along here now from Eliel's on board. Good clean pass here. So he doesn't really get up beside him enough for him to think that he's there. Well, it's, that's because he wasn't there. What's the view like on those little rear view mirrors that are bouncing along on the road while you're trying to shift gears and steer and place your car? You can look at them if you've got a long straightaway, but in that little section there between those two turns, Elio might not even hardly even peeked in his mirror. Yeah, but you have to be alongside if you're behind like that. You really don't don't own that piece of real estate. Well, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying they end up colliding and both of them are going for the same piece. Marco was hoping that Ellie would get on the brakes a little sooner and maybe he'd get that run in the inside there. Yeah, hope guess, is not a strategy. Yeah, guess I was asking about blind spots, like you have in there your is, There is a car. big blind, he's right. On an over, there wouldn't be because you'd have a spotter that would be telling you. Here, there are no spotters, so you have to, spotters, you have to manage everything with your mirror and kind of assume that nobody's in there because you can't see them. And the only time you can see them is in, when they get equal with you. Yeah, I'm sure the technology will come down one day like we have in our road cars where we'll start yeah. to actually have that the flashing light on, the, yeah. on our dash and on our mirror that uh, there's an object coming up. I'd like the ability to adjust the range on that a little bit sometimes. But or turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> that defeats the purpose. Graham Rahal defeating the field at the moment. Looking for a sweep in Detroit, but a lot of racing left to go. Changing your oil after 3,000 miles? Kevin Harvick. If you'd use new Mobile One annual protection, you wouldn't have to. 
Protect your engine for one year. It's just one oil change. Don't change your oil. New Mobile One Annual Protection. Keep the dream alive with the Honda Accord. The car that made Car and Driver's 10 Best List a record 31 times. With features like multi-angle rear view camera, standard. The Honda Accord. There's a reason drivers have trusted Firestone tires since the very first Indy 500. Drivers like Haroon, Shaw, Voigt, Andretti, Rossi. Because while finishing is hard enough, it's winning that makes you a champion. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Are you still trying to perform with an old computer? That's like LeBron trying to perform with old equipment. Ooh, well, that is not what the fans signed up to see. Is outdated equipment holding you back? Upgrade your game to Intel's fastest processor. Probably upgrade those, too. Here comes the fun with Sea-Doo. Starting at just $52.99 and get 0% financing. Visit SeaDoo.com today. Game two, Cavs, Warriors, tonight on ABC. What's up Wednesdays this summer? Look at me! Exactly. Uh -huh. Anthony Anderson is back with new episodes of To Tell the Truth. Would the contestants mind twerking? <laughs> it's all part of ABC's summer fun and games. It's a strange show. To Tell the Truth returns Wednesday, June 21st on ABC. Graham Ray Hall pounding away here at the Detroit Grand Prix course. No caution so far today after a race that had the fewest in Belle Isle history, or tied the fewest anyway yesterday, just two yellows. We got through the first corner okay today, and after that, the race settled in. And there was a lot of action, but none of it really affected Ray Hall. He now has 12.8 seconds on Sato. If he does five more laps, I think whatever yellows come out will not have a negative effect on him. He has been dominant through both of these races. And if he wins this one, and it is still early, he will be the only person to have done it. The double in Detroit. The a double, double Detroit. has been done. Remember, they used to run the double headers uh, for a, a little bit in Toronto. But not here. And Scott Dixon won both uh, ends of that weekend in 2013. And Eddie, you were talking about lap times before, but for Graham Rahal, just turned a 15-7, and Sato is a 16-2, so still being able to pull away and making it look very easy. Yes, he is, but he's using a lot of road, though. He's not taking it easy. Dixon and Rossi both on the push to pass here. This is a race for sixth and seventh. Oh, how much does that hurt Dixon's foot when he has to press on the pedal that hard when he's trying to get by a car in front of him? When he's by himself, he can do it easily and kind of make a little bit of pressure off. But when you're passing somebody, you have to press that pedal so hard. And with his broken ankle or whatever it is that's, that he hurt, that must be so painful at this part, point in the race. Now Scott Dixon with that terrible crash in Indianapolis a week ago as Will Power now begins to put some pressure on Takuma Sato for second. Uh, but never complained about it on the radio as Doc Punch uh, told us both yesterday and today. Uh, toughed it out and uh, took the championship lead with a terrific drive here yesterday uh, back in the car after that awful crash at Indianapolis. And now again, uh, being on a different strategy than these cars in front of him, but being in sixth position today. And as we know, everybody goes off to Texas here next week for the IndyCar Series. And a few of the drivers will head to Le Mans, including Scott Dixon. And also, Tony Kanaan's going to join Scott Dixon, now taking over for Sebastian Bourdais. So Le Mans, a very good event over there in Europe, and a lot of drivers like to go over there and compete there. Power has to get by Sato if he wants a chance to get up to Rahal. Mentioned next Saturday, the Verizon IndyCar Series next race, next Saturday, 8 Eastern on NBCSN. 
as our friends uh, over there take over the rest of the season and take you through the championship in the Verizon IndyCar Series in uh, in the early fall. Of course, te that technically still summer, I guess, uh, out in Sonoma. So this for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Again, 15, almost 16 seconds behind Graham Rahal as they close in on that pit window for the race leader, this radio transmission a minute ago. We have about four or five laps to go. We want to push to get ahead some of these back marks that you have come out in front of. So there's technology in the IndyCar series and all the teams have the feed where every car is tracked on a map around the racetrack. Here's Pagano in, more on that in a minute, Doc. He wanted to be the first among the leaders to come in. It'll be the final stop of the day for Simon Pagano. Got to get a full of fuel, tires on, waiting, waiting, waiting on fuel. 8.1 seconds expecting his two teammates in momentarily. And a similar strategy for 98, of course, Alexander Rossi. He wants to take this early part of the window because he was on those Firestone Reds. Now he has a brand new set of the primaries just waiting on the fuel. 7.6 seconds. And again, just like we saw for Pagano, he'll have to save a little bit of fuel now, but he's good to go to the end. Now, John Graham Rahal will be coming to the opening of the pit lane here in just seconds. Do they call him in now? Do they leave him out for another lap or two? Pit stop now for the leader. Rick. Graham Rahal, this is what he's been hoping for. He was able to get out front, as you mentioned, with the radio transmission just a moment ago. The goal was to run as hard as they possibly could during that lap because they're planning for when he comes out. Once again, a nice clean pit stop, and they are out. Car 26 to Husado comes in. Their plan is to put a little bit of turn in the front wing, just give a little bit more downforce. Hopefully it'll be a nice clean stop there. You see him lean over, make the adjustment on the wing. Both sides, oh, looks like they didn't get to the outside. 7.9 seconds, Doc. And here's Well Power for his final stop. We'll watch to see if they do a front wing change. They talked about an understeer a little bit, which means the back of the car was loose. Uh, air pressure change, get it full of fuel. No wing change, he's away. How about that? Power ahead of Sato on the exchange of the pit stop. These outlaps are so important on this last stint. You've got to get everything you can out of your car. Passion over the look inside Sato. Coming up to turn six, very important. If you can get a good drive off this turn, get a draft going down the stretch. So there's your leader. Joseph Newgarden still needing to make the last pit stop. Do we see Newgarden in here? Nope. So I talked about some of that technology. Basically, you look at a monitor in front of you, and it shows you with a little moving number on the screen where every car is on the track in every lap. And the engineers all know how long the pit road time is, the delta, if you will, to come down pit road, take a full load of fuel, and go back out of the pits. They try to time that to get their driver, you, you heard Ray, Graham Rahal's team, to get him as much clear track as possible. Dixon. Doc? Final pit stop for yesterday's runner-up, Scott Dixon. Remember, they had the fuel issue on the very first stop of the day. Cost them an extra eight and a half seconds. Trying to get all the tires on, getting it full of fuel. Great stop for Dixon's crew. They made up for that first stop. Seven seconds even. Lightning fast stop. So waiting on Joseph Newgarden's final pit stop. And then it'll go back over to Graham Rahal with a very healthy advantage on now Will Power and then to Kubasato. Some traffic. You hear the two team for New Garden is laying out tires. Now that he's caught some of this traffic, bring him in. So New Garden pits from the lead with 22 laps to go. That'll give the lead back to Graham Rahal. As things cycle out, we're back to Detroit after this message and a word from your ABC station. Twenty laps to go. Time for the Honda Race Rundown. We'll look at what's happened today. Graham Rahal, uh, in visor cam at the start of the race, lined up in the inside of row number two. 
unlike the pole position he had yesterday. Had to settle in line for a little bit. Castro Neves and Hunter Ray with some contact and some trouble. And it cost Castro Neves a chance to do well in this race. Cut the rear tire right on his front wing. Front wing change for Hunter Ray. Both drivers now well deep in the standings. Hunter Ray is all the way back in 16th place. Castro Neves is back in 12th. Tony Kanan is going to have to come back. He just made a scheduled pit stop and then ran over the air gun, leaving the pit road, and that is going to result in a pass-through penalty. Oh, just a little too late grabbing that air hose. It's amazing how many times that happens in a year. Not to the same team, but all the teams. It's, it's so tight on these uh, pit stops. They get out of it in a hurry. I'll tell you what I'm amazed by. When they make that tire change with the outside front, and then he, he throws the gun back, that those guns don't fail more than they do by just being thrown and landing on the concrete as often as they do. Well, Eddie, you owned a team, and you know how much maintenance goes into all the equipment there, but not only the race cars, but also things everything. like the air guns, everything. And, and it's the good teams that have a proper service plan for all that sort of stuff, because anything that's weak on the team always exposes itself. So what a weekend for Graham Rahal in the works. He's about to lap the Hunter Ray, who he was fighting with. The guy that he shared the front <laughs> yeah. row with at the start of the race. Uh, who had a good race here and who didn't? Yeah. Hunter Ray doesn't give him any room to get through. Hunter Ray is going to make my life difficult, and I don't know why. Well... Rick perhaps has that answer. Well, it's because Ryan Hunter Ray, if he gets passed by Graham Rahal, will go a lap down. Now, he has the ability to defend his position as much as he wants, but once he goes a lap down and a yellow comes out, he's got an even bigger problem. It's important to look at where the push to pass is for Graham Rahal. Yesterday, at this point in the race, he had nearly 150 seconds. That's a full allotment left. He's now down to about 67, and just a few moments ago, when he was trying to get by him, he was up to over 80 seconds of push to pass. So, he's trying to get by, but at the same time, looks like uh, Ron Ron Hunter Ray isn't going to do any favors for him. But let's not forget, he has 16.7 seconds on Newgarden, and that is a lifetime, since we only have 18 laps to go. Provided we don't have a yellow flag. 17 laps now. You guys keep waiting for these yellow flags. That just, well, look, they that, happen when they happen. They it, don't get programmed. Isn't that, isn't that racing, right? Everything changes when the yellow waves. Doesn't seem to be this weekend. Ray Hall yeah. has dominated everything. <laughs> whoever, fun. whoever his choices, for sure. they were, they were right. Can look, we, look how big that gap is. Yeah, can we play the Jeopardy music here? <laughs> but even if a yellow comes out now, he's still in the bird seat. So Joseph Newgarden around willpower for second a moment ago. After that, actually, it was on the cycle of pit stops where he came out ahead of power. Newgarden on the three-stop strategy today. And these other guys he's racing around on the two-stop strategy. Interesting. I, I think Newgarden has had the fastest car today. But for him to get a shot at Ray Hall, that famous yellow that we keep talking about has got to happen pretty soon. Seventeen laps to go. Pagano there running in fifth. You were just riding with him as he pursues to Kumasato, the pole sitter today, for fourth. Graham Ray Hall is the leader here in the Detroit Grand Prix. Degree has redefined deodorant with motion sense technology so that I can redefine power, footwork, range. The more I move, the more it works. Degree, it won't let you down. So if anyone has a reason that these two should not be wed, speak now. Yeah, so sorry. Oh, no. It's just that your friend Daryl here is supposed to be live streaming the wedding and he's not getting any service. I missed like the whole thing. What? And I just got an unlimited plan. It's the right plan, wrong network. See, Verizon has the largest, most reliable 4G LTE network in America. It's built to work better in cities. I'll tell you what, just use mine. Thanks. No problem. All right, let's go live. Say hi to everybody who wasn't invited. <laughs> when you really, really want the best, switch to Verizon Unlimited and get our best smartphones for just $15 a month. Gold Bond presents Shack Wisdom. Tis better to be calm, cool, and collected than wet, stinky, and rejected.
Gold Bond Men's Powder Spray. The powder you spray to control odor and wetness with an irresistible scent. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Hi guys, it's great to be here. In the desert. At the mall. On the mountain. At school. At the beach. In the Big Easy. Yeah. yeah. Today I want to show you guys the next gen Chevy Equinox. What do you think? That's pretty. Pretty sexy. It looks aggressive. But not overbearing. It's not too big, not too small. Seems like the perfect car for anybody. I would take it anywhere. She's a bad mamma jamma. <laughs> Current qualified GM lessees can get this introductory lease on the all new 2018 Chevy Equinox for around $249 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. I love the WNBA. This is gorgeous. They're huge talents. I learned a little bit from them as well. puts it on. They make the game extremely exciting to watch. Why do I watch them work? You have got to be kidding me. Two words, sick candles, mad skills. Spectacular. Candace Parker. Della Don. Sue Bird and Diane Ross. Maya Moore. You have a fan of me because you are the best at what you do. In the Thunderdome, the audience chooses which little ideas the game back will become the Bevtide. big business. The people decide who gets the money. Steve Harvey's Thunderdome, series premiere next Sunday on ABC. NBA Finals on ABC tonight. Game two, Cleveland Golden State. Warriors up 1-0. 13-0 in the playoffs. Who wins tonight? Coverage starts at 7.30 with NBA Countdown and it streams live on the ESPN app. And by what margin will the winner win tonight? A rather large gap in game number one. Large gap between Graham Rahal and second place Joseph Newgarden. This As is we ride on visor cam. This is really interesting because Rahal could get frustrated and make a mistake, but he's doing exactly the right thing. He knows what his gap is, and it's now down to 13.7 seconds over Newgarden, and he's just taking his time with Hunter Ray. It's not worth trying oh, to yeah, pass a Hunter Ray. second lead, but Newgarden is chipping away. He's got about a second and a lap that time. Simon Pagino dispensing of the now lap car of J.R. Hildebrand. Remember, had that flat tire earlier, did Hildebrand. Dixon trying to follow through and race Pagano for the fifth position. Dixon now behind Hildebrand and trying to get around him. He smartly goes to the right-hand side, which gives him the inside on the next turn. Will he make it? And he does. Now, Hildebrand and Aloshin there. Aloshin in the seven. That is for position. That's 19th and 20th. You see the red car lotion sticking his nose in areas where you really can't get the pass completed so he'll have to have a rethink about this and make sure he can time his passes a little bit better he's just telling him hi I'm, I'm back here let me through hey just thinking back to that visor camp for a minute you know you're racing in an open top car you've got the uh, the full face helmet on but the, the windscreen I know you've got tear offs on there but is there ever a point where you run out of tear-offs and start to get junk on it? I, I will tell you what is one of the nicest moments you have in a race is when you have gunk like that on your visor and you do have a tear-off and you open it up, your whole view of, of the racetrack changes dramatically. And when you run out of them, it's nasty. It's as nasty as that. And what you will do as a driver, you'll take your hand on the back side of your glove and try to clean the shield. <laughs> If you've run out of those visor strips, sometimes it doesn't do a very <laughs> good job. Uh, I remember when I first started this, I thought this, you know, stuff's on the visor all the time. I was using those visor strips forever, and then halfway through, I realized I didn't have any more left, and I thought, yeah. this has got a special art to making sure that you don't use up too many too soon. Yeah, it's interesting. So we have 12 laps to go. Rail has 12.2 seconds on Newgarden, and the last lap he lost almost a second per lap in traffic behind Hunter Ray. You know, as we ride on board right now with Graham Rahal, see how smooth his hands are. Yes, we're going over the bumps, but Eddie, we've been on onboards before with a few guys around here, and they are battling the steering wheel. This tells me how good this car is set up for Graham Rahal. Nice and smooth. I'd say his blood pressure is starting to get kind of high with Hunter Ray. There's a tear off on the visor. Looks like he's got one left floating around there with a tab to hook that finger into and give himself a clear view. That was nice. Keep 
the dream alive with the Honda Accord. The car that made Car and Driver's 10 best list a record 31 times. With features like multi-angle rear view camera, standard. The Honda Accord. Changing your oil after 3,000 miles? If you'd used new Mobile One annual protection, you wouldn't have to. Why are you three inches tall? What? You don't like shorts, people? Don't change your oil. New Mobile One annual protection. I sold my dream house to buy my first Domino's store. I built my store with my bare hands. I used my college savings to buy my store. It means everything to me. But we've decided to tear them down. We love what we do, but not where we do it. Come and see our remodeled stores when you carry out large three-topping pizzas for $7.99 each every day. <gasps> Mike's drink on the bright side. I'm here to demonstrate the incredible stopping power of Duralast GT brake pads. And that is Joey Logano, coming at me at more than 200 miles per hour. But I'm not nervous. They're just like brake pads we sell at AutoZone. They got carbon fiber technology and a V-slot design, which reduces wear and increases stopping power. Introducing the new line of Duralast GT brakes. Woo! Ha! <laughs> Nailed it! Proven tough from the tracks to the streets. Sold only at AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. I guess I was born with the crayon in my hand. I decided to see if there was a way for design to play a positive role in what was going on in the world. There's a jacket that's reflective for visibility, sleeping bag jacket, jackets that turn into tents. I usually do my fashion sketches on the computer. I love drawing on the screen. There's no lag time at all. It feels just like my markers. With fashion, you can dress people and help people. It's really cool to see your work come to life. charge of the Detroit Grand Prix all weekend basically Graham Ray Hall who led all but 15 laps of yesterday's race and today has led 31 of the 61 laps that have been completed he is out in front by nine and a half seconds on second place yeah, I mean, it's been really, really hard to follow yeah at this point I think you just save your tires nice and easy you got one car between you and uh, Newgarden that would be Max Chilton in the eight car between the leader Graham Ray Hall and second place Joseph Newgarden. It's a, it's a ways back and with these laps winding down, I think that's really good advice to the driver. What? Up to this point, Graham has had a lot of clean air as he's been leading. This is the first time he's been behind a car as close as he has been with Hunter Ray in the air. Obviously, Scott is not as clean and he cannot run the line he wants to run. He has to work on the car that's ahead of him. So he looks like he's trying to keep just enough distance so the air is is uh, a little bit cleaner. But look how big this gap is. And there's the second place right there. Yeah. Who, who's doing about a second, yeah, on average about between half a second to a second faster than per lap. Per lap. And Joseph Newgarden in second place despite using a three-stop strategy today, Doc. Exactly. Remember yesterday at the end of the race, he, when we were in commercial before we interviewed him, he said, you know what, I had the best car I've ever had the last five laps. He said, I was reeling in the front two. If we had five more laps to go, I might have been able to get there. He said, I hope I get that chance tomorrow, referring to today. And they're telling him on the radio, you're gaining almost a second a lap. He's now 8.5 seconds back with eight laps to go. They just told him a moment ago. That means on the white flag, you're going to be right there. New Garden is charging as hard as he can go. It'll be interesting to keep uh, an eye on the gap. You see, we have a car in the runoff in turn number seven. It is Ed Jones. Local yellow, turn seven. It's just a local yellow at the moment. Right now, New Garden is hoping it is more than a local yellow. The car is facing forward. And IndyCar's flagging protocol is if the car is facing in race direction, 
then it's a local yellow. If the car is turned around, uh, excuse me, uh, it, then it stays uh, green, just a local yellow in the race. If the car is sideways, facing traffic, then it would be a more difficult situation. And you see that the uh, safety team has a truck stationed in that corner, and they will be able to spin Ed Jones around. So we're, when they're when they have a waving yellow like that, the drivers have to slow down. How much is it, Scott? 15 percent, 15 15 roughly, in that area. And as you mentioned, the local yellow is what Graham Rahal wants it to stay, because if it does go full course yellow, then they back pack up behind the pace car, and it gives Joseph Newgarden an opportunity to be right on the tail of Graham Rahal. But it looks like right now. This car hopefully will get started. The gap is down to 7.5 seconds, and we have seven laps to go. You have to know that Ray Hall is starting to get frustrated, but Hunter Ray is not going slow. He's running a very fast clip now. This is also the time in the race when you're getting close to the end, especially with two races on a weekend. Your body is just aching, your arms, your legs. And remember, like I said, no power stir, no power brakes in these cars. And for me, it was always my neck and the base of my skull just being pounded into the car around this racetrack all the time with as rough as it is. I wonder how close Ray Hall will let Newgarden get to him before he makes a serious attempt at passing on to Ray. Two seconds, three seconds. Down to 6.7 now. Nine laps to go. Six and a half second lead. Six. All right, turn and seven is clear. They were not able to get Ed Jones' car restarted, but they did pull it back behind the safety barrier. So we have a full green racetrack with now six laps to go. And New Garden can see Rahal. That makes a big difference when you're chasing the car ahead of you. I think about 26-year-old Joseph Newgarden started karting just outside of Indianapolis at Newcastle Motorsport Park, a track that's owned by a past IndyCar racer, Mark Dismore. A lot of guys have come through that, including Connor Daly. Went through the karting, through the Road to Mazda program, and is a guy now that is living his dream by driving for Roger Penske, and I think weathering the pressure pretty well. There's the gap. Still six seconds, coming to five to go. He talked about at the beginning, Eddie, expecting uh, Penske to rebound today. They rebounded quite nicely. Second, third, fifth. Castro Nevis having problems earlier. He's running 11th, but still not at the top step of the podium. I, I think Penske only counts wins. But what a great race by Newgarden and Power. So Ryan hunter Ray has moved over and let Graham Ray Hall go. Uh, that is effectively, I hate to say it this early on, but the end of the race. Well, that's really just done because at one point in time, Ryan Hunter Ray might need that from Graham Ray Hall in the future. So that's a very smart move. Yes. And, and let's emphasize that Hunter Ray had the right to do that. He was not cutting him off. He was just running as fast as he could to yeah. try to not go down a lap. Here he moves out of the way and lets Ray Hall get on with his race. Now Ray Hall has another problem. That's Marco Andretti, I think, ahead of him. And let's hope Marco does exactly the same thing. And Trini back in 15th place. Have a car slow on the course. James Hinchcliffe, he's on a straightaway. Caution is out. Full course yellow with five laps to go. Oh we have goodness. a race. It wasn't an electrical problem. I mean, oh boy. So Graham wow. Rahal smartly not pushing the car to try and get past Ryan Hunter Ray as his team told him leave that gap there and just drive the car smoothly. So now the tires are still good on the car a little fresher than it would have been if he had a made up forceful pass past Ryan Hunter Ray. But you know that Joseph Newgarden is going to have the knife between his teeth because he knows he doesn't have that many laps to go. So he can't be. He can, he can only be super aggressive if he has a chance to get up there. And you have to assume that Hunter Ray will let him go by. So there is the safety truck pulling up to Hinchcliffe's car. You see the pace car has picked up the field. Because we are where we are in the race, lap cars will be driven down the pit lane and lined up at the back of the field for a potential restart. They've got to get Hinch's car. Who's that? 
cold in that cloud of dust and smoke. That's Spencer Piggott. I mean, and indeed I, it is. He's on fire. And that, that could put the race, getting this race restarted in jeopardy. He's on the straightaway between the pit lane and turn three. The There's a runoff there. So did he drop any liquid on the track? Can they get the two cars cleared into areas and get this race restarted with any time left, any laps left in it? I think I heard them say it's a turbo. Which isn't like having a, a hole in the block, obviously. And that's exactly what I was thinking, Eddie, is that a turbo, if something happens to a seal in a turbo, all that smoke is the oil gets into the exhaust and makes that big plume of right. smoke. So as you were discussing, and we now hear up and down pit road, red flag. Yep. So they want this to end under green. But to answer your question, unlikely there'll be a lot of fluid from that car on the racetrack. This is not what Ray Hall needed, and it is what Newgarden needed. So the pace car will bring the field to pit road. They're going to all cross the start finish line before they stop the field for scoring purposes. So that will be three to go. The soonest we could restart the race would likely be two to go, maybe one to go. <laughs> so. The plot thickens uh, oh considerably. <laughs> hey, that caution flag, uh, yep. it's now a red flag. Back after this from your ABC station. The Detroit Grand Prix on ABC, brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Stay on track with great rates at Progressive.com. The field parked under the red flag here in the Detroit Grand Prix in the waning laps when both James Hinchcliffe and Spencer Piggott's cars had problems on the course. The situation facing Graham Rahal is this. All right, so they're going to move lap cars out of the way, so it'll be you and Newgarden, and it'll be about, a, I don't know, a two, three lap shootout. You have 60 seconds to push to pass. He has 36 seconds to push to pass. So, Graham has a little bit more weaponry there as far as uh, defending ability. Where that push to pass extra horsepower boost is concerned. So here's how we got under first the full course yellow and then the red flag. Listen to this. all over again. And then Spencer Piggott. Yeah, you heard Jan's description a minute ago of the uh, turbo failure. It's and home. yeah, talk about putting up a smoke screen. Smoke screen for the drivers following off that corner. Goodness. A little quiet on pit road at the moment, Rick. Well, we're standing down here in Graham Rahal's pit. Ricardo Nault is uh, is talking with his driver right now. All right, let's talk about this restart and what it's going to be like because we saw Joseph Newgarden seem to be making a big run, but can your man hold him off at the restart? Yeah, Newgarden was making a big run, but he uh, he got stuck behind Sato for a while and he didn't get away from him. You know, he wasn't able to pass him. I think we have the car. You know, it's going to be crazy. You know, we got a couple of Penske's behind us. They've been fast all year. But we've been fast this whole weekend. I think we have it. We'll see. <laughs> Once again, very positive. He's seen what his driver can do out here. But again, on a restart, you never quite know how it's going to play out. Doc, what about your end? Let's check in with Tim Sendrick. Tim, your guy reeling in Ray Hall by a second a lap, and now you're going to be right together with one, maybe two to go. Does he have enough? You know, we'll find out. I think it's all about the restart, obviously. And with all the uh, pickup on the tires and all that, I think everybody's going to be sliding around on this lap. So I think you'll see... Uh, See a lot of guys giving it a shot, so just depends on what kind of run we get here. They just are, they've already told Newgarden he has half the push to pass that the guy in front and the guy behind Will Power has, so he's going to have to try to attack and defend at the same time. All after they finish cleaning up. You see that the scene where Hinchcliffe's car had come to rest. 
So they're going to reposition the lap cars on the pit lane. So that might get us a two lap sprint to the checkered flag in the Detroit Grand Prix. Ooh, this is getting good. Another added bonus of uh, the red flag, besides the great finish we're about to see, you saw during our side-by-side -side coverage, uh, IndyCar kind enough to allow a tech, uh, one of our technicians out there to clean the lens on the visor cam, and Graham Rahal as well. Uh, thank, uh, we thank him for that while he's sitting there waiting it out. So we'll have a spectacular view for whatever's going to happen here also. Doc? I'm with John Boslow calling the race for Will Power. We're looking at the screen here. Your guys got more push to pass than Ray Hall or New Garden. And you know his middle name's Attack. <laughs> you know, can, can he get it done? I think so. But, uh, you know, with, uh, he's done a great job all day. And we had great pit stops. Uh, we had a little bit of a, not the result we wanted yesterday. Uh, no fault of Will's. Uh, with just a couple of bad calls on my part. But, uh, uh, we got to be smart. We got our teammate in front of us. Uh, you know, we, we think that New Garden could go for the win. We got enough to enough overtake, you know, Sato behind us. Uh, we need to keep him behind us and just have a good result. All right, we'll see what happens. Will Power may have a shot. Uh, Rick. We're down here with Ziggy Harkis, who is the strategist for Takuma Sato. And let's talk about what the plan is for Sato on this restart. Does he have enough power? Does he even have, have enough push to pass? Well, we have enough for us, but the trouble is the people around us have a lot more. So uh, very worried for the restart. You know, he's done great on his start so far. And, uh, you know, we just got to hope, but he's only got 17 seconds left. I think it's 42 seconds behind and 38 in front. So definitely a worry. Now, let's explain why wasn't he as up as far as he started. He started in the lead but got caught out. What happened? Yeah, we uh, we pitted uh, lap earlier than Ray Hall, so he jumped us and we got caught behind traffic. So, uh, And after that, we had his teammate actually came out in front of us after he stopped, and so we were held up there for quite a lap, quite a few laps, and uh, Ray Hall kept pulling away like a second a lap. So we got traffic was our problem. The car's okay, you know. I'm not sure we're quite as fast as a couple of the others out there, but uh, he's doing a great job, and we just need to get ready to go here. All right, once again, Ziggy Harkis, the strategist for Takuma Sato. Jan? And here's something very intriguing. As you see, they are repositioning the lap cars now to the back of the field. We've been talking about push to pass. Well, there is no push to pass available on starts and restarts unless there's two laps or left, less left in the race itself. So three on the board right now when they come around by my math when they get the green flag there's two laps to go therefore push to pass for the first time this season should be enabled and boy oh boy will that be a fight down to that first turn and remember that's a driver controlled function that adds a temporary boost of horsepower to the machine Graham Rahal sitting in his car under the red flag here at the Detroit Grand Prix after James Hinchcliffe had an apparent engine failure and Spencer Piggott had an apparent turbo failure both at the same time in the closing laps when Rahal was well in command of the race. Now under the red flag we're going to get the race restarted with two laps to go and all of the lap cars that he had between himself and Joseph Newgarden removed by rule for the restart in the closing section of the race. So it's going to be a nose to tail lineup, push to pass activated at the green flag, and two laps to decide who wins this race. And there wow. will not be any tentative passing. When no. you go for a pass, you'll be, you'll just go as far deep as you can and hope you make it. This, this could this could turn out to be a slugfest. You know, we were talking uh, during the commercial break about the decision to use the red flag. Of course, we remember a few years ago now at the Indianapolis 500 with Ryan hunter Ray and Elio Castroneves having that terrific fight and uh, an incident in the late laps. And they chose to red flag the race and gave us a spectacular, thrilling finish to the 500. Same decision made again today, I believe. Uh, I believe it's the correct one for the fans. Some of the drivers may not like it, especially if the one that's leading now <laughs> doesn't win. I know the one won. that's leading. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But um, it is going to be a terrific finish to this race. So one of the things we saw on visor camp, look at the blisters on Graham's hands. Graham Rahal here, the leader. And he said, take those hands up. 
That's the second time. He's, it was the same thing at the Indy Grand Prix, wasn't it? Yes. Well, it just goes to show you how abusive that the, the car is to drive. Remember, it's a form-fitted steering wheel to your hands, number one, but there is no power steering. It's all direct all the way through the car. And what he's feeling in his hands, remember, Eddie, is what oh. we feel in our bodies all the way through. As I mentioned probably 10 laps ago, and I was just recalling from driving this track before, you are beat up right now. You are punished. But most importantly now, you have to be mentally fit, mentally strong, so you're not going to make any type of mistake for these next two laps. We are just over two minutes to the command to restart engines. A look back if you're just joining us. Maybe you saw on the social media, Red Flag Detroit, spectacular finish coming up. Here's how we started. It was Takuma Sato on pole, Ryan Hunter Ray second, Graham Rahal yesterday's winner started third. Had a clean start, in fact, didn't have a caution until this one came out in the last five laps of the race. Had some really good action though and some interesting encounters. And those front wings sure were sharp today. Just that little touch ruined Castro Nevis's race when he had to come in with a flat rear tire. Also ruined Hunter Ray's race yeah. when he had to come in and get the front wing replaced on his machine. It wasn't the only contact we had. That's Ed Jones, 19, and J.R. Hildebrand in the green car. And another flat tire. And another front wing. The front wing was a good business today to be replacing all those. A lot of teams had some troubles on pit road. Several pit penalties were passed out over the course of the day. Oriel Servia speeding on the pit lane. And it doesn't take much 50 miles an hour for speeding on pit lane. Scott Dixon ended up having a fuel issue. They thought the fuel was not going in. It ended up going in, but it took an extra eight seconds on the pit stop. Marco Andretti smartly does not leave pit lane, realizes that the crew member is not in the air hose for the front wheel jack. And you can see right there on the circle, Tony Canon running over his yeah. air gun. And, and you do know that when you hit it, because you can feel it. Graham Rahal took the lead on an exchange of pit stops after Sato led the first section of the race. He had gapped the field until uh, the closing laps of the race. As you see Hunter Ray, who was trying to stay on the lead lap, pulling over. By the way, this red flag, a double whammy for Hunter Ray. And there the problem with Hinchcliffe that brought out the caution, and then Spencer Piggott had a problem as well. And it led to the red flag setting up the finish we're about to see. Which I think was a great decision. Obviously, so, I'm not Rahal sitting in his race car right now, but. So the car's parked on the pit lane now for approaching 17 minutes while they have cleaned this up, repositioned the cars to the back of the field that are a lap down. We have 14 on the lead lap. Ray Hall, Newgarden, Power, Sato, Pagano, the top five. Dixon running sixth, recovering from that long pit stop of earlier. And the command going out from race control. You see the hand signals being given. Fire them up again. And none of these tires are fresh right now. These tires are at their end of their wear, Scott. And important to note that even though drivers might want a couple adjustments on the car to improve it under a red flag condition, no work can be done on the car. So for these guys right now, they have exactly what they finished with is what they're going to put their foot on the gas with rushing into turn one. At this point, these last two laps are just going to be a very high speed chess game. You have to make sure you put your car in a place where they can't pass you. So the field rolling off. And of course, with the 14 turns and the 2.4 miles nearly to get the field formed up, we will get the restart the next time by and have two laps to go in this race. And look for turn three because everybody is going to be trying to pass in any space they can find. And there really is only one line through there. And the drivers weaving their cars, trying to get the tires warm, trying to get any debris or what we call marbles off the tires. Marbles are those pieces of rubber that are around the racetrack, and they probably got some of those on their tires on the way into pit lane. So watch for them to really warm their tires up and get them up to temperature, plus cleaning them so they can have a good run through turns one and two and a run down to turn three, like you mentioned, Eddie, which is where I'd be trying to pass people after that long straight. So during the red flag, they did have the sweepers out and cleaned a lot of that up in a lot of the, the, the racetrack. So that is a help for these drivers, uh, particularly in the passing zones as they go double wide. But Alan, the tires will not be warmed up when they turn into turn three the first time. Everybody will have relatively cold tires and tires that are not up to temperature don't have as much grip. But 
but you don't have a choice. You cannot wait two laps for the tires to warm up. So it's going to be very hectic at the start of this race. There is the driver activated temporary horsepower boost that their car gets and how much time, how many seconds of that each of the top five have left. Look at Will Power. He has a lot of it left. But the guy that's directly in front of him is his teammate, Joseph Newgarden. And you know that being here in Detroit in the captain's backyard, Roger Penske's hometown that he's now running, you will not want to take out your teammate. If there's a crash, the race is going to end under caution. How does it finish? Here they come to the restart. Ray Hall, Newgarden, Power coming to the line. There'll be two laps to go in the race. Okay, hey, remember your overtake. Nice job. just enough of a gap between him and the second place. Everybody was leaning on the push to pass there. Newgarden looked like he's struggling a little bit getting going. Power right behind him. And Ray Hall is pulling out a gap. We talked about how good Ray Hall's car is and it's showing here. Joseph Newgarden again, the back end sliding around. He could not get the power down, putting his foot on the gas. Rear tires are spinning. Look at Ray Hall. Look at the distance he's put between them with cold tires. That is exceptional driving. Leaning on that push to pass all the way down that straightaway. We used the word dominant before. He's done it again today. See Newgarden wrestling that car off turn 11. Coming to the white flag. Graham Rahal one lap away from a weekend sweep. Final lap here in Detroit. Hi, white flag. Your 810 pass to the Newgarden. Good gap. Alan, you mentioned a Ray Hall sweep. It's also, if he gets to the finish line first, a Honda sweep here in Detroit, Chevy's hometown. Down the long backstretch, down the strand. The end of the straightaway is really the last place that Newgarden had a good chance of passing him, but he's way too far back. Ray Hall's using every inch of the road. Talked about this being a double points weekend and the impact this might have on the championship. Graham Ray Hall came into the weekend 15th in the championship. He's going to leave in sixth place. This New Garden without enough. Checkered flag will be waving. Final couple of corners and a sweep in the Motor City weights as Graham Ray Hall takes the checkered flag in the second of the Detroit Grand Prix doubleheader races. You're the man, you're the man. Man, that Honda engine was strong. Great, great job. No one's ever won both these races. Excellent, excellent work. Great job, gentlemen. Great job in the pits. Great job all day long. Great job, boys. Great job. None of the top How five. That? None of the top five positions changed hands in those last two laps. You want to talk about a dominant weekend? He led 55 laps yesterday. He led 41 today. 96 of 140 laps led this weekend for Graham Ray Hall. And every obstacle he had in front of him, he just went right over. That was a very pressure-filled last restart. What a drive. You'll remember this race for a long time, Scott. Oh, weekends like this don't come around very often, do they? I'm sure his wife, Courtney Force, who's drag racing this weekend, is probably watching this and gave a big high five to her team. Well, we mentioned they don't run these doubleheader weekends often. In fact, Detroit, this is the only one this season that's on the schedule. 
but they had run it uh, uh, in Toronto before. Scott Dixon swept both ends of a doubleheader weekend there in 2013. This, the first time it's been done here in Detroit since they went to the doubleheader format. And look at the championship picture now. Graham Ray Hall is in it. He's seriously in it. And we have to remind everybody that Honda won in Detroit, which has to be a little special for them. Next race on the schedule for Graham Rahal and the whole crew is Texas where he won last year. Got to be a lot of momentum headed towards Texas for this weekend. So we asked you at the beginning whether it would be a, another new winner or a repeat winner and the answer is repeat from a day ago. <laughs> now we just witnessed something exceptional. I think so. No doubt. Six, yes, no doubt. Six career wins, two of them in two days. And he's going into one of his fav favorite race courses, which is Texas, with a very powerful Honda engine. Looking good. Yesterday was sweet. I have to think that winning on day two has to be even twice as great for Graham Rahal. Not only did he win race number one here in Detroit, he came back and dominated race number two yet again. Not only did he dominate it, but he managed to pull it off for a restart. Oh, you were not happy. You couldn't have been happy when that thing was red flag. What was going through your mind? Well, I mean, to me, you know, race is a race, and. I mean, we, we drove the race, right? I mean, if the engine blew up in the last two laps, it blows up, it should have been yellow flag. But I mean, I guess they want to, I get they want to show for the fans. But look, I'm glad we came out on top. United Rentals, uh, Turns for Troops, Pengrade, Hyatt, um, Steak and Shake, everybody that's worked so hard to make this happen. And once again, we get a win for Honda here in Detroit. And trust me, there's going to be a lot of people back in Southern Cal. All right, walk us through the restart. Because obviously, you got Joseph Newgarden, who had been turning really fast laps behind you, right on your tail what did you do well I didn't think he had anything for us as long as we could clear traffic I mean our lead went from what 18 seconds or 15 seconds down just due to traffic but in the clear I could gap him again so I knew uh, it was gonna be tough but I thought we could hold him off the marbles were just really bad so honestly those laps were ugly they were ugly but uh, look we won it feels great uh, you know all around just to a spectacular weekend, you know, for us. And my wife went to the finals. I don't know if she won too, but uh, ultimately, just a great day for our family. Once again, the first man to sweep the duel in Detroit. Alan? Impressive, for sure, for Graham Ray Hall and the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team. We're the ones that should be clapping for you, Graham. Bravo performance here in the Motor City. And lots more still to come as we wrap up the Detroit Grand Prix. Well, Visor Cam sure got a good ride this weekend here in Detroit from Graham Rahal. Victory Lane two days in a row. And the extra little um, lens cleaning it got on the red flag before that two lap sprint to the finish. Just fine. Great work by the Rahal Letterman Lanigan team. Prepared a great car, turned it over from one night to the next, and made the exact right call on strategy both days to get Graham Rahal 
two wins in a row. So here are the final results of race number two of the Detroit Grand Prix. Good bounce back for the Penske team. Certainly has been. We've always seen Penske dominate just almost all season. But this year, I think the Honda Power Plant is certainly helping quite a few teams. Surprises. And for me, Graham Rahal, that single car team, exception this weekend with Oriol Servia, but a single car team is out battling the big super team setting. Especially here. But Detroit always delivers a few surprises. And it delivered one, not one just today, but yesterday and today. More interviews with top finishers to Doc. Second day in a row, the highest finishing Penske car was Joseph Newgarden. Fourth yesterday, second today. Now, you were reeling in Graham Rahal until the red flag came out. What are you thinking sitting on pit road behind him, knowing you're probably going to have two laps to get him? I'll be honest. I think we were all just trying to get to the end there. You know, it was two to go. We had marbles all over the tires. So in that type of situation, there's not much you can do, unfortunately. Uh, you'd, you'd love to say, hey, I'm going to go race this guy, and I'm going to try and beat him. And I would have done that if he messed up. You know, if he would have made a mistake, I would have tried to capitalize. But, you know, if everyone stays steady, we're just trying to hold on to the race car. So very difficult to do that at the end but look when it's your weekend it's your weekend and, and Ray Hall did a great job him and his whole team so congrats to those guys and you know good bounce back for us at Team Penske on the number two Verizon home car. Hey, talking about bouncing back behind you you had Will Power your teammate he had twice as much overtake left as you did how concerned were you that he might have a shot to get by you on this final couple laps? I mean honestly I wasn't super concerned but I also wasn't you know, as excited that I was going to be able to get Ray Hall. I just think all of us were trying to make it to the end there. We had so much pickup and marbles on the tires. It's just you're sliding all over the place. So you can't really do much with anybody, you know. Will couldn't do much with me. I can't do much with Ray Hall. You just try to finish up the race. But, um, you know, it was a good good weekend for us. Uh, we just got to qualify a little bit better. I, you know, I put that on me this morning. Um, we had a better lap in us. We just, I didn't get it done. So we can't expect to win the race from 13th. You know, we would have started up front. I think we would have given ourselves a better position. So we'll work on that. But we got fast race cars here at Team Penske. It's good being in Detroit. Thanks to all the fans that came out Chevrolet that's all they do and um, fun to be in the city and represent I was trying to get Chevy that win but just not enough for today team Pesky three in the top five led by Joseph Newgard Jan and yes of course he was talking about Will Power who was behind him with a lot of push to pass but Will nice recovery from seventh to third but we're just asking Joseph at the end when he knew how you had all that push to pass he said the marbles made it tough to make a run yeah, it was actually better grip than I thought. Normally, you're just sliding all over the place. But, um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't close enough out of two, and it was my teammate, so I was definitely not going to take a big risk on the last uh, last two laps. So, uh, yeah, really, really happy. And I have to thank Chevy for giving us such a great package uh, to run at the front, and Verizon, obviously, for the, all the support. Now, you talked about your strategy having shifted. Your strategy previous in race one was to make three stops. Now you've done two. You had to do a little fuel save. But... When the Penske team in a place where it's been dominant in the past and you're kind of on the back foot, how do you rally as a team then make those changes today? It's, it's been a big shift from day one to day two. Yeah, I mean, yesterday I was just unlucky when the yellow came. Uh, we were, we kind of went halfway between a, a two-stop and a three-stop. We kind of went longer than the three-stop guys. But, um, I mean, I was saving so much fuel yesterday. It was just uh, too slow. So, um, but, you know, the guys did a great job with the strategy. That's, a, that's all we could get out of the race, and uh, I'm very happy with third. All right. Nice payday for willpower. Doc? And about Takuma Sato, still smiling from that week in Indianapolis, that win in Indianapolis last week, and certainly you should be a pole today and a pretty good run. Take us through those last three or four laps. Well, the last two laps was uh, quite uh, quite significant. You know, everybody using a pistol pass, and that was quite exciting. And unfortunately, there is not much action in front, but I gave everything I could. And uh, I think team had a no mistake, you know, this weekend. And uh, we were not quite, you know, far enough to, to get on the podium uh, on, the, on, on the race. But I think uh, we should be very proud of, you know, what we achieved uh, this week and uh, last week. And uh, I think, you know, got on pole position with the break the lap record. That was a significant uh, imp improvement for the car. And uh, what an outstanding standing job from Andre Children's Sport. What about these last two weeks? What does that do for you personally as a driver and for your entry here at Andretti Autosport? And take a look. Take a look at here. This this is back home in Japan. Look at that screen. That is you and everyone stopping and applauding. How special is that? It is special. We now have to be very proud of that. And a big thank you to Guriko and uh, all the sponsors, all the supporters. And uh, it is absolutely amazing feeling in the last two and a half weeks for me. And uh, what an adventure. But uh, I can't thank you enough to Michael and the entire under Old sport. Now we are championship contender and are pretty looking forward to the uh, working with a uh, hard with a teammate and uh, number 26. Uh, put on the podium a championship contender and now forever an indy 500 champion a great couple of weeks hey congratulations thank you very much sir thank you. alan 
All right, Doc, thanks. So from here, the uh, road to the championship heads down to the Lone Star State and Texas Motor Speedway for Graham Ray Hall, winner of the last race there and the rest of the Verizon IndyCar Series. And our pals over at NBCSN take over the coverage for you through the championship deciding race in Sonoma. They start next Saturday at 8 Eastern time. And uh, it should be a spectacular race in Texas. We look forward to seeing that one Thanks. as Graham Ray Hall makes his way over to the podium. Sorry, I'm trying to get out of your way. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I think you go that way, yeah? Oh, nice. Oh. Bob. <laughs> Bob. Dad and brother. How about that? Oh. And a nice moment there. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so a couple things. Turning point in this race, that exchange lap 23-24, the in-lap pit stop and out lap that gave Graham Rahal the lead over to Kuma Sato. I think the key thing where there was exactly that. And he put the push to pass to use, got a good run going in on his in-lap and get a nice clean pit stop. And that gave him the gap to give him that comfort zone. And that's all comes down to team strategy. And they did it perfectly. No fault on Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan today. They did an excellent job. And we talked about that strategy often has a big hand in deciding these races, and it sure did in that one. And then the opportunity to put a wheel wrong on a restart with two laps to go, and you've been sitting there for 17 and a half minutes, and you don't put that wheel wrong. You instead insert yourself into the championship picture. Look at after the Indy GP, before qualifying in the 500, what the championship standings were, and look at what they are now. Graham Rahal not even in that left-hand column. Now Scott Dixon is the championship leader, and Graham Rahal is up there in sixth position. Withstanding that pressure, I thought, wow, that's that's solid. He didn't put a foot wrong the whole the whole weekend, and then right at the end, he had all this time in his back pocket, and he had a few laps to go, and the red flag comes out. And everybody thought, well, they're going to be all over him turning into three, and he just gapped the whole field right from turn one. So you'd have to say... It was just his weekend. That's yeah. just sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. But he's put himself right back in position to make a run at the championship. And third takeaway from the weekend for me was Honda versus Chevrolet, where perhaps in the past Chevrolet, the last couple of years since the introduction of the Aero Kit, has had the upper hand on courses like this. Honda, very strong here this weekend. And you're, you're true, really have, you know, Chevrolet has won 14 races last year, just Honda too. And you think about this year so far, Honda's already won five races. But I think about that, but I also think about the small team. Ray Hall, Letterman, Mannequin Racing is just a one-car team and going against those powerhouses like Penske, like Ganassi, and like Andretti Autosport. And I think Ram now is showing that he is one of the best American drivers to come out of our system here in the many, many years. Now, coming up next here on ABC, World News or your local news, except on the West Coast. And Graham Ray Hall winning both ends of the doubleheader. A moment to say thanks to our great team who's carried you through our portion of the Verizon IndyCar schedule. A wonderful group to be a part of and appreciate all their hard work and friendship. So for Eddie Cheever, Scott Goodyear, for Jan Bikas and Rick DeBrule, and for my friend Dr. Jerry Punch, Alan Bestwick saying goodbye from Detroit, where Graham Ray Hall has been the man of the weekend, winning both ends of the Detroit Grand Prix doubleheader in spectacular fashion. The third generation racer standing on the top step of the podium for a second consecutive day. What a drive, what a weekend for Graham Ray Hall in the Motor City. 70 laps around the 14 turn. Raceway at Belle Isle Course, down to the start. The essence of racing is going fast. And right now, Newgard is blindingly fast. There was a lot of action, but none of it really affected Ray Hall. He has been dominant. Who's that? We now hear red flag. So, the plot thickens. How does it finish? Look at Ray Hall. Look at the distance he's put between them. And a sweep in the Motor City weights as Graham Ray Hall takes the checkered flag.